This is joint work with Giada Bianchi from Harvard Medical School and Don Go Song from Johns Hopkins University. So in macroeconomics, and more in general in the policy debate, there's been a lot of discussion about the short-term trade-off between containing the pandemic and preserving macroeconomic activity. We feel there's been much less discussion about what could be the potential long-term consequences of the COVID-19 economic distress. So this paper is interested in this particular question. So what we are interested in is that trying to understand if a severe economic distress can have long-term consequences on uh, mortality rates and life expectancy. So to answer this question, we're going to adopt a, a time series approach. So what that means, we are going to uh, look at the historical relation between the growth rate uh, of life expectancy and death rate and then employment rate. So just to give you an idea of the data, these are the uh, uh, series for life expectancy, death rate and employment rate for the overall US population, that would be the black dash lines. For the white population, that would be the green lines and for the African-American population red lines. We couldn't get data on other uh, groups identified on gender and race. So what you can see is that thankfully, uh, uh, human well-being has been improved over time. So we see that life expectancy has been increasing, the death rate has been declining. And what you can see is that also the difference across the races have been uh, declining. So African-Americans tend to experience higher levels uh, of death rate but this uh, has been declining over time. And similarly, men tend to have a higher death rate and lower life expectancy than women. And also this difference has been declining over time. At the same time, if you look at the plot for the unemployment rate, you can see that African-Americans tend to have higher levels of unemployment and more volatile unemployment rates. So what we're going to do is to put these three series into a vector autoregression. So in particular, we're going to have the growth rate of life expectancy the growth rate of the mortality rates and the level of unemployment. So we are going to recognize that variables like uh, life expectancy and death rates are not perfectly observable. So we're going to allow for an observation error and we're going to estimate these uh, uh, with the uh, Bayesian method. So just to give you an idea about what this observation error does, here I'm reporting the growth rate of the original variables, life expectancy and death rate with the green line that would be the filter series that comes out of our exercise. So what you can see is that this uh, uh, Bayesian approach gets rid of these very high frequency movements uh, in uh, the growth rate of life expectancy and death rate, uh, but preserves the core dynamics uh, of the variables. So now the second step is to look at the historical effect of an unemployment shock on these two variables. So here we need to make some assumptions. In particular, we are going to identify the shocks using a, a, a so-called Cholesky decomposition. And so the identifying assumption is that a shock to the unemployment rate can start affecting death rates and life expectancy uh, with a lag. Uh, we, in the paper, we also consider a different uh, identifying assumptions in which we allow the uh, opposite uh, scenario in which all the co-movement between these variables on impact is due to the unemployment rate. Uh, the effects for the long run are similar, so we're going to focus on this particular identification strategy in, uh, in the interest of time. So what you can see is that a shock to the unemployment rate uh, uh, it's very persistent. So after six years, there's still a probability that the unemployment rate is not back to where it was before the shock. And it tends to have uh, important effects on the growth rate of the death rate and the growth rate of life expectancy. In particular, the death rate uh, goes up following the shock. We can repeat the exercise looking at the different groups that we identify based on gender and race. So here again, the red lines correspond to the African-American population the green lines to the, uh, correspond to the white population and the black dash line is the overall US population. So uh, what you can see from this graph, if you focus on the top panel, is that a shock to uh, unemployment seems to be followed by uh, stronger responses uh, uh, for African-Americans. Now, this is in part due to the fact that this group experiences larger shocks. So if you look at the uh, uh, impulse response for the unemployment rate, you can see that the red line starts from a higher point. So part of the stronger response is actually due to the size of the initial shock. So in the second row, what we do, is we normalize the initial shock to be 1% for all groups. And uh, uh, some interesting findings uh, uh, come out. First, uh, if you look at life expectancy, you still find that the African-American population experiences a larger decline in the growth rate of life expectancy. But when you look at the death rate, you see that white women tend to have a stronger response once you control for the size of the shock. And white men tend to have, in the long run, a stronger response.
So now we get to the core of the paper, that is how do we use this historical evidence to understand the COVID-19 unemployment shock? So the first thing we want to do is to get a sense of how big the COVID-19 unemployment shock was with respect to the typical innovation to unemployment. So we uh, do some uh, identification in, in, in the paper and we find that the COVID-19 uh, shock was a three standard deviation with respect to the typical unemployment uh, innovation. And what is interesting here is that if you look at the different groups, if you focus on the first column where the shocks are measured with respect to the typical shock to that group, you will find something that has been discussed often also in the press that white women have been particularly affected by these uh, recession. So you have that for them, the shock was almost five standard deviations with respect to the typical shock. Now, if you look at the absolute magnitude, that would be the right hand side, the right column, you see that African Americans nevertheless still have a larger shock. It's just because for them, shocks tend to be larger in general. So with respect to the historical evidence, it's not particularly large shock. But uh, when, you, when you compare to the absolute magnitude, African Americans are still more heavily affected than the other group. So then we uh, uh, try to understand what is the cumulative effect of this shock at different horizons. So you can see here we computed the percentage change in life expectancy 5, 10, 15, and 20 years out. And let's focus uh, on the third column, 15 years out. We see that there is a decline in 0.5% in life expectancy. That translates into 0.4 years uh, uh, in terms of life expectancy. What about the death rate? Again, focusing on uh, uh, the overall population, that's the first row, third column, we see a 3% increase in the age-adjusted death rate, and this translates in 22 years, uh, uh, sorry, 22 additional deaths every 100,000 uh, citizens. So when we look at the cross-group comparison, here we see that for white men, we get uh, a significant increase uh, 15 years out, when we look at life expectancy, going back for a second, we see that African Americans, again, at 15 years horizons, have a short, uh, have, a, have a very sharp decline in life expectancy. Uh, what if we want to translate these into actual death? I, I talked about the change in the death rate. I want to try to get a sense of how many excess deaths we are going to have uh, down the road. So here the exercise is to compare what would happen with and without the unemployment, unemployment shock. So in the paper, we explain how we reconstruct the population in the two cases. It's less uh, simple than what it, it, it could seem. And what we find is that uh, the additional deaths at the 15 years horizon for the overall population would be 0 0.89, uh, sorry, uh, 0.9 uh, million, so a very uh, large number. When we look at the different uh, uh, groups, so we find uh, uh, 180,000 and 270,000 uh, additional deaths uh, at the 15 and 20 years horizon for the African American population. Just to put this into perspective, this corresponds to 0.35 and 0.5 percent of the projected African American population. When we look at the white population, we find 0.8 million and 1.2 million at the 15 and 20 years horizon. And to put again this into perspective, it's 0.3 and 0.45% of the uh, white population. So again, there, there is a, a slightly larger effect on the African-American population, but I, I would say that the effects are large for, for all groups. And they, are, they seem to be equally distributed between uh, men and women. Okay, so let me give you a brief discussion of, what we're, of how to interpret these results, okay? So first of all, let me say upfront that this paper is not about uh, 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 claiming that we shouldn't have lockdowns. So uh, we see that there are studies these days that show that there are uh, at least uh, 100,000 uh, lives that have been saved uh, thanks to lockdowns. So uh, we are not trying to argue against this. We are trying to bring attention that there is also a cost associated with the recession that is mostly experienced in the long run. The second thing to keep in mind is that we use historical data and that's the only thing we can do uh, uh, to try to forecast what's going to happen in the future. So there are a series of factors that could make our results uh, better or worse. For example, strong policy interventions could reduce the long-term impact on uh, human well-being. We need to take into account that this is the first recession with the Affordable Care Act. But there are also some factors that could make things worse. So first of all, there is limited access to healthcare. There is a temporary discontinuation of uh, preventive care. Uh, then many em employees have lost uh, private insurance. Uh, and more in general, 
uh, many citizens are reluctant to see a doctor because they are afraid of uh, contagion. So con to conclude, so we find that unemployment shocks can have a long lasting impact on uh, death rates and life expectancy. We are in full support of whatever measures the uh, policymakers retain is necessary to contain the pandemics. On the other hand, we want to uh, uh, bring, out, bring uh, uh, attention to the fact that if the goal is to save lives, we should try to do this both in the short run and in the long run. And so additional uh, uh, economic measures uh, and uh, health measures are necessary. Thank you.